Hi guys, it's Belinda. Welcome to Pretty Tattered. Today I have some fun makeovers. It's furniture I got from a yard sale, Habitat from Humanity, and an estate sale. So stick around because we're going to have some fun doing these makeovers. Okay, I admit I forgot to take a picture of this table before I started sanding it. I know, I'm bad. I'm really bad. Please forgive me. I promise I'll never do it again. I got this table at Habitat for Humanity in the St. Louis, Missouri area and I only gave $10 for it. It is solid wood and that is my favorite kind of furniture and it's a smaller piece which means it's always easier to sell the small pieces. I sanded the top and the front down to the bare wood because I was going to stain that part of it but the rest of it I only sanded off the clear finish because I planned on painting it. Okay, next I take some Dawn dishwashing liquid, some vinegar, warm water, and I give this baby a good cleaning. The Dawn dishwashing liquid is good to clean it all up. The vinegar helps get rid of any smells. This one didn't smell bad, but I still like mixing the vinegar and the Dawn dishwashing liquid together to really get in there and give this puppy a good cleaning. Okay, it's not a puppy, but it is, you know, a table. And anyway, it really cleans it up. When I paint furniture, I like to do several pieces at a time because I hate cleaning out the paint sprayer. First, using blue tape and paper, I taped off everything I didn't want to paint. Now's when it gets interesting. I'm taking some wax paper, I'm cutting it the size of a printing sheet, then I'm going to run it through my printer. Uh huh. I bet you're thinking, what in the world is she doing that for? I selected this pattern for two reasons. One, because it was free. Two, because I just liked it. Now this is probably going to surprise you, but I run the wax paper straight through the printer. Now don't gasp, because I've been doing this for many a years. And before you ask, no, I do not have to buy a printer often. I use the same one for many years and I buy the cheap ones, as you can see. To prevent that mirror effect, be sure that you flip your design horizontal before printing. Okay, now I'm taking that wax paper and with the side that has the ink on it, I actually place it down onto the furniture and then I just rub it lightly over the print. I do not rub it hard, do not use a credit card, just do it lightly, then lift it. Don't let the wax paper move. So use one hand to hold it in place and the other to rub the print down. Then remove the paper without smearing. Then I usually take a little bit of paper towel, I'll lay it directly down on the print and I will rub it just to get any of that excess of ink off, but do not let that paper towel move around. Then just lift it straight up without moving the paper towel. You can see the excess of ink that came off the pattern and onto the paper towel. And it looks great. I only wanted the pattern on the drawer. Now I'll let it sit and dry overnight and then I'll take a clear finish and I'll brush it on. Because it's on bare wood, if it would have been painted, then I would have had to use a spray clear finish or the pattern would smear. 
Okay, I've had these ink pads for a really long time and I'm going to use them to age the furniture. I used the combination of the brown and the black because I thought that really gave it more of an aged look with the combination of the colors. So first I take the black and just rub it along the edges. I also put the ink anywhere else that I think the wood may have aged. Then I use a clean cloth to kind of wipe it down to take some of the excess of ink off to give it more of that faded aging look. To get that kind of used, worn look around the drawer pull, I used what's called a Fantastics. It's actually like a plastic stick and at the tip of it, it has a cotton tip. You can get these pointed or you can get them just rounded, depending on what you need them for. Basically, you dip them in your ink or paint, whatever you're using, so you have more control of how much ink or paint is applied to your project. And you can get these at any craft store like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, and they're usually found in the art supply section. Then using the pad I actually applied ink around the edges just as I did the front of the rest of the table. Next I took a brown ink pad and went over all the black ink just to give it a little bit more of a realistic aging look. I thought about using a mold and making a leaf design out of clay to put on the table, but then I decided, you know, I just really liked how it looked with just the aged look. Then I sanded around the black edges to give it that distressed look. Then the only thing left to do was to spray it with a couple of coats of clear finish and it was done. I found this little cabinet at a yard sale for five dollars and I knew instantly what I wanted to do with it when I seen it. I definitely wanted it to become white and distressed but I also wanted to remove that metal palm tree plate in the front and replace it with something that had flowers on it like the flowers on the front of this cabinet. You know how it is you get something in your head and you are determined to get it out. Well sometimes what's in my head needs to stay there because it's a little creepy in there but anyway I think I did a pretty good job and nobody got hurt that I'm aware of. Just started cleaning this I noticed right off the bat that the black paint on the inside of this was coming off so I was going to have to coat the whole thing in shellac spray before I could paint it. One of my favorite things about shellac is that it's made out of bugs. Yeah it's made out of bugs I think they get them in the Amazon forest or something but because it's made out of bugs it's a little safer to use and really how can you go wrong with something made out of bugs? But also it has its downfalls. It doesn't hold up against water are really good and it also whatever paint you use it will turn the color a little bit yellow but hey the bugs that tops all that right so you may not want to use it as a clear finish on your product but it works to seal anything in like this paint for instance that's coming off or just bare wood to keep the paint from sinking in and using up too much paint so once the shellac was dry I spray painted the whole thing white so I found this great flower design that matched the front of the cabinet or at least as close as I could get it to match on graphics fairies and of course you can't go wrong because you know it's free you can never go wrong with free right so using tracing paper I printed it on my inkjet printer so I painted the door and I removed the bamboo that framed the tin that was in there unfortunately well let's just say that I've never been known for being gentle with things but I'm just gonna mark it off as you know these were just fragile so might have had a little accident and some of them got a little broke but I'll glue them together and it will look great when we're done. So what I'm doing now is just trimming the picture down to fit on the front of the door. I'm taking a cheap chip brush and I'm just taking some Mod Podge and I'm going to brush it directly onto the surface of the door. I'm going to contradict myself here because last time I did a video I told you guys to always put the tracing paper print down. Well in this case I'm going to keep it up because if I don't I'm afraid the colors are not going to be that bold this time and it's really important on this one that it is because the picture's already a little bit faded looking because it's supposed to have this old age look. So I'm going to give it a try, I'm going to turn it face up and I'm going to put the Mod Podge on the outside of it as well. 
Here I'm just taking a wooden roller. Some people call them seam rollers or craft rollers, but it's just a little wooden wheel, and I'm just rolling it across the picture just to smooth out any of those air bubbles. It really, really helps, and it, it helps prevent you from tearing it. It seems like if I do it with a wet cloth or my hand, I have a bigger chance of ripping it that I don't have when using this wooden wheel. Now that all the bubbles are gone, I'm just taking some Mod Podge and going over the top of the print. And it's staying on. It's not smearing. It's looking pretty good. Okay, okay, I'll admit I was wrong this time, and maybe not in every case, but technically I was right, because 99% of the time this print will smear. Mm -hmm, take my word for it. I have a lot of experience. So now I'm just taking a blow dryer to it to speed up the drying process. Now that it's all dry, I'm going to try and replace all those little bamboo pieces that frame the picture. Let's cross our fingers and hope I can get them to look good. I used E6000 glue and weights to hold it down until it dried. Next, I sand the whole thing to give it that distressed look. Then I put the door, hinges, and pulls back on. The last thing to do is to spray a clear coating over the cabinet. All day. Okay, I confess, I did not get a picture of this before I sanded it either, but I did video it. And guys, I bought this for only $4 at a yard sale, but it was filthy, really seriously dirty. So I would say the biggest job on this was just getting it sanded down, cleaned up, back to that good bare wood. And next, I sanded it. And sanded it. Yeah, a lot of sanding. And then I cleaned it. And cleaned it again. But I managed to get it all clean and ready to be painted. I decided that I was going to stain the top and the rim, but the handle I was going to paint black and the rest of the box I was going to paint black. Sorry, but I didn't get that on video. Uh, something tells me you're a little upset. I created this sign on Canva and decided I would put it on the front of the potato bin. So I just printed it out on regular printing paper and mod podged it on the front of the bin. I wanted to give the impression that the whole potato bin had been painted black, but at one time it was all wood with just the words potato on it. So I wanted it to look like the black paint had been peeling back and exposed the old potato sign. So what I did is I took a sponge, some black chalk paint, I blotted the sponge on the paper for towel to kind of get off some of the excess of paint to give it more of a faded look and then I just kind of sponge painted it all around the sign just again to make it look like the paint had been fading or chipping away. Oh yeah and I almost forgot before I mod podge the paper on I actually burnt around the edges just to give it that more aged look. Then I sprayed it with a couple of coats of clear finish and it was done. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. 
Thanks for watching it. If you like it, then please do a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. If you don't, I'm going to send the crazy chicken after you. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.